Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neesh Kumar Singh and we are talking about UFT tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be trying to configure and set up the UFT instance on our machine and trying to understand that what steps are really necessary in order to be performed before making use of the tool. Of course, that requires a certain set of add-ins to be installed, certain set of pre-configured uh, prerequisite to be set up before you can actually start installing the UFT and of course what steps need to be necessarily considered when you talk about installing UFT. So today we will all learn about how to install UFT and do the initial interaction with it and definitely make using of that for different concepts of automating a particular test. That's what we will be looking forward to. So let's get started and understand how to set up and install UFT instance on your machine. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding how to set up UFT, that is how to install a UFT instance and getting started with UFT. In order to do the same, of course, you can begin with interacting with the official website of the UFT and download a copy of that, which remains quite generic as the previous process of the other tools as well. So I will be putting a link of my previous tutorial to do that process of uh, downloading the process of UFT and getting a set of file with you. And you can definitely make use of that to do the installation part. When you get the setup copy with you, you will have all this architecture in your instance and generally there are certain prerequisites which you will find here which can be definitely installed on your machine before the UFT can be installed. So generally you don't have to go to each of these folders and manually do that. The system is capable enough to define it on its own. So when you run particular setup, that is the setup file here provided to you, you will automatically be guided with all the prerequisites to be installed there. The system will review your system and analyze if that has to be really done or there are any missing uh, add-ins and prerequisite to be installed. So the setup will automatically install all the necessary prerequisite and then proceed with the UFT installation. So you don't really have to worry about that whether these prerequisite exist or not on your machine. You just have to come to this particular setup, launch it and pick up the first link here called as Unified Functional Testing Setup and just make a click on this. This will automatically scan up all your entire deck uh, machine and see that if there is anything pending as an installation as a prerequisite and go for that. So just press OK here and this should do the necessary installation required and it will just do that next part of it. So this is the part of the main installation of the UFT where it generally starts with the installation of the product that is unified functional testing. So welcome to the HPE unified functional testing setup wizard click on next year. You just have to as usual accept the terms and conditions which they extend to you. Click on next. This window is pretty important for people who are feeling, uh, looking forward to explore different add-ins. Now here we do have all the list of add-ins which you can actually make use of and any additional components provided by the uh, HP itself uh, or the UFT to make use of it. For example, runtime engine, UI designer and IDE, run results viewer, sample applications and so on. Now, the box here represents that it is included in the installation. The cross here represents that it is excluded from the installation. Now today, if you are also planning to do some of the work on the Lean FT tomorrow, or you're planning to integrate with ALM plugin, you can just include them by dropping down here and just select will be installed on local hard drive. And this is the cross option which says entire feature will be unavailable. So right now I'm not interested. I would do a fresh installation if required, but I'm installing some of the add-ins. You can have a look on the add-ins here, like ActiveX add-in is something which is common and mandatory. The web add-in will be common and mandatory. Visual Basic is an optional, but if you just install that, that's really good. And rest all, it's up to you that you want these add-ins to work on your application or not. And this is where you will be looking forward to set up something that what exactly do you need to work upon because your applications can be different, can be built on Sybil, can be built on Java, can be built on Delphi. So you can just take a call on this that what add-ins you really want to install. So for me, I think I will be just taking care of all of them. So I'll just fill it up and uh, set up all these add-ins. 
It's just that it will take a little slight longer time to complete all the installation, but you can definitely be patient enough to get this all done. Okay, so let me just do this for the other part as well and click on next. Now the installation process will also ask you, do you want me to configure Internet Explorer settings if you are using that as a browser? Allow run time, running UFT remotely from ALM. That is again for the add-in. If you have that add-in, this can happen. And allow running UFT remotely from automation scripts. That means from any other tool. So whatever you want to configure, you can select that and you can run this test. That is install. Now the installation process will take some time and it's not just going to be like slow but it does, does take some time and uh, ask you to go ahead with the installation process so you can be patient and wait for that All right, so that's all it. What you have to do, uh, this is your final confirmation that you're done with this. If you want to read the file, you can go ahead or look at the installation log. Just click on finish. At this point, you would observe that two components have been installed on your machine. One is the unified functional testing, the tool, and the second is run result viewer as the result option of the UFT, which will populate all the results uh, after each execution. So all you need to do is double click on the UFT to launch it to just confirm if it is working or there needs to be a reinstallation or some kind of support required. So we are working on version 14.0. So right now here, if you see, you have got a message that uh, the software license in use will expire in 60 days period. That means by default, a trial version comes to 60 days of evaluation time. All here you need to do is click on continue to proceed ahead, which will be the next window displayed to you is the add-in where you select the set of add-ins and uh, which you want to work upon. So if you remember, we have installed all these add-ins and now I have the choice to make sure that which are one I want to work with and just select them. So you just have to select at least an add-in to get started. You can always get started with this, but you can just say, for example, right now, we'll be talking about them in more detail in the next tutorial. Just press OK and let's say hello to UFT. All right, so that's all. This is where you welcome to UFT yourself and uh, you just get started with creation of the test cases and understanding them one after the other. So just hold on here. We'll be getting back to you with another tutorial to talk about it, that how to get started and understand uh, the UFT concepts and overview about this. So we will be looking forward to that in the next tutorial. Here you can find a lot of things in the beginning here, the menu option, the toolbar, which will change when you create a new test. Here you can open existing and you can look into the recent solutions. Again, you know what, ex what is solution. If you don't know, we will be talking about that. These are the various possible things which can be performed as a part of the UFT testing. You can go ahead with GUI testing, you can go with API testing, you can go with business process testing, and these are the direct forum links to that. That means you don't really have to go to Google and ask for a question answer. You can directly get in this particular forum to make use of it to get experts advice on your query to resolve your issue. So that's all we have for this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.